Hey, Slade here, and I'm really excited we're going to make Eggs Benedict today. We're going to make it California style, as you can see here with the tomato and the avocado. And we're also going to use prosciutto instead of Canadian bacon, which I'm sure many of you know isn't even close to what Canadians actually call bacon. But that's another story. So Eggs Benedict is something that is often thought of as, well, let's go to a restaurant and we'll go order some brunch. It's not often made in the home. And why is that? Well, the hollandaise sauce can be a little involved to make. The poaching of the eggs maybe is something that not everyone's comfortable with. So my goal today is to demystify the process of Eggs Benedict. It takes a little bit of time, but there are some straightforward ways to make it uh, that are not necessarily traditional, but get you really great results. And that's what we're going to accomplish today. So we always begin by making the hollandaise sauce. And by the way, if you ever make a cooking video, make sure to keep your arm out of every single shot as you add the ingredients. That's really important. So anyway, we're going to add lemon juice, water, salt, and cayenne pepper, and we're going to whip these eggs up with no heat for about a minute till it gets nice and light and frothy. So next we're going to take that bowl and place it on top of a saucepan that has water in it, a couple of inches of water that is at a medium boil on medium heat. And we're going to give it a stir. And at this point, this is when we would begin to add melted clarified butter a few drops at a time to get that emulsion going between the oil and the butter and the protein of the egg. But what we're going to do today instead to make it a more straightforward process is just add a stick of unsalted butter that is cold and cubed and allow that to melt slowly into the mixture. You get the same results, it's really outstanding, and you're going to love it. Now I said it's a more straightforward process, but it still is an investment in time. You're going to whisk this now after the butter melts for a good 10, 12, maybe as much as 15 minutes depending upon the amount of heat you apply. And you never want to apply too much, that's when the mixture can break and you separate the oil and the protein. So over that medium heat, you're going to whisk say about 12 or so minutes until you get the consistency you want. Ultimately it's going to thicken up as you see here. And I'm going to go a little further than this because I like mine to be a little bit thicker, about like this. Ah, uh, isn't that great? I love hollandaise sauce. Now, if you stir too long, you might actually end up making mayonnaise. So you really can't lose, unless you hate mayonnaise, like my friend Mimi, but that's another story. So what we're going to do while we make the rest of our Eggs Benedict is simply take this off the heat and put a towel over it and let it sit to stay warm. So now we're going to make our perfectly poached eggs. And I think it helps to think of an egg as having three things inside of it. A yolk, a firm white, and a loose white. And if we could crack the egg into a fine mesh strainer like where my youngest son is helping us do here and get rid of those loose whites, that'll be a great thing and we get a nice, clean, beautifully poached egg. The loose whites end up being those kind of crazy wisps that just float around in the water and surround the egg when you poach it. So we'll do our best to get rid of that. And whether you have a fresh egg which has fewer of those loose whites or an, or an older egg that might have a little more, just go ahead and strain it and it really helps the poach process. Now watch this. My youngest son's going to crack this egg like a pro. Boom. I love that. Now the first egg, notice it did get cracked and so we did replace it and we did not waste an egg in this entire video. That egg ultimately became a scrambled egg for my older son this morning. So there are three keys to making a perfect poached egg. One is straining it like we just did. Two is adding vinegar to the water, which helps firm the whites up. I did that off camera. And three, make a vortex like I'm doing now. This is two and a half inches of water in a large saucepan. Now when I put this egg in, you're going to see the whites are just going to simply surround the yolk perfectly. And in fact, I'm going to make a bonehead move here and put my spoon in to try to help it along. And I do more harm than good because the vortex is doing its job. So just leave it alone. It'll fall right in the center and a perfectly creamy poached egg will take about three and a half minutes. So leave it alone and let it cook. So when the egg is done cooking, pick it up with your slotted spoon or your strainer spoon and go ahead and rest it on a clean kitchen towel or a paper towel to dry. Now for comparison purposes, this second egg, I didn't strain it and I didn't create a vortex and you'll be able to see the difference. Now 
keep in mind this may not be as perfectly shaped as the first egg, but it's going to taste just as delicious. So the next step is we're going to go ahead as we're toasting our English muffins is I'm going to add the prosciutto and you can fry the prosciutto a little if you want. I'm just going to warm it up on top of the English muffin as it rests in the toaster oven and it's going to be great. And the next step is going to be assembly. Very excited. So as I said, this is kind of a California style. We're going to add beefsteak tomato and avocado right underneath our eggs as we place them on top. And then our beautiful hollandaise sauce. I am so excited. I can't wait to eat this.